Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Fun Sweet Huns. I believe this is episode four. Now, I have been asked pa in the past week, since the previous episode, especially since the patch hit, which was a day after. Fonbus, when are you finally going to talk about the obvious elephant in the room? The 080 patch and the game and the carriers and how everything is going on. I gotta tell you, I have been tempted many times in the past week to just make a video out of nowhere and not upload a regular game and just make sort of a, you know, what we usually do in fun with hunts. Uh, just do it within the week. Uh, but I was restraining myself for multiple reasons. Uh, one of those reasons is I wanted to give it some time. Because first impressions can be really strong. And they can be wrong. Uh, not necessarily, but they can be wrong. And I wanted to really give it some time. I really wanted to settle in. Um... And I wanted to see, and I wanted to see how long it's also going to take for Wargaming to do something about it, or to say they're going to do something about it. And I wanted to see uh, how is the mentality of the player base going to continue. Now, before we continue with anything further, what you are seeing currently in on the video, there will be a couple of games I'll be showing today, uh, completely different things, uh, all kind of carrier related games. Uh, this one though, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about 555,000 damage Hakuryu uh, that happened during the past week. It took someone two or three days in total to break the previous highest damage ever made in World of Warships by almost 100,000 damage. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know... Uh, the top damage on any server dealt of all times was about 450, 460k, something like that, I think in a carrier as well. And this is back in the days when carriers were super broken and overpowered, right? Well, it took people only 2-3 days to break that record by 100,000 damage. Uh, and they did it, I think, in a Haku. Uh, well, they did it in a Haku, and I think it was something like this. You take the long-range Hakuryu planes, uh, you speed boost everything that you can, all the modules, the captain skills, and all that jazz, uh, and you have... I don't even know how long these torpedo torpedoes can go. It's like 10, 12 kilometers. You can stealth drop. You have 10... Uh, sorry, you have 12 planes, I think, which are extremely tough and resilient, really, really freaking fast. As you see, it's, it's less than 30 seconds from my carrier to to the enemy, and you can't, unfortunately in these bloody replays you won't be able to see a couple of things that I wanted to show you. One of the things you can't see the arcs. The arcs are extremely good, but you must not touch the rudder of the plane. If you touch the rudder they go wide extremely fast and then it takes a while for them to go back, but you can start dropping all the way basically from your base because the attack lasts pretty long. And you can do three very quick drops of four torpedoes which are extremely um, stealthy, relatively fast, and can be dropped from much you know further away. And you're basically doing this without ever risking of losing a plane. Because the first drop you will drop far away, the second you're entering the AA, you commence the attack, you dodge the flak, no problem. And then the third you just immediately drop again. And it's like, you can do this the entire game and as this Kronstadt here is forced to bunker behind the silent, because first of all, I'm keeping him spotted all the time. Which was one of the main issues that the new carriers have. And one of the issues that Wargaming wanted to resolve is permanent spotting by carriers. Well, carriers may only have one squadron now, but it feels like they have more presence on the map than they ever did before. Which is bizarre. It feels like they're scouting a lot more now than they did before because they basically never have to go back and rearm. Even though they're doing it all the time, they're not actually doing it because they are on the battlefield doing multiple drops and then they press one button, which is F. 
the planes go back and they immediately lift off with another squadron. Now, Karma had its piece here, and as much as I was trying to not play carriers too much, although I have played my fair share of carriers and I didn't want to actually do this, um, Wargaming has announced that they will make some changes. So I wanted to give it a go before it actually happens, just to have a feel for it. As you can see, my entire team is in the bottom left corner of the map. Uh, we have given the enemy three quarters of that. I am purposefully ignoring the right side. Uh, I, I don't want to do anything about them, even when I decide maybe I could do it. I usually just give it up because I wanted to reinforce the left side as much as I could. Now, I started taking damage in my carrier. I didn't even realize this at the beginning. Uh, and I completely failed to realize at the time because I was just talking to my stream at how bizarre and stupid uh, this is. And broken and overpowered and how it's wrong. Um, I failed to realize that I was taking damage by the time I realized it was about this time. And I was like, oh, well, shit, I'm probably going to die here. Uh, my, there, there's zero ships from my teammates on the right side, as you can see. And I wasn't paying attention too much. I was playing more of an airfield than an aircraft carrier. Uh, it costed me my life. It costed us, uh... The game, I mean, I w I'm not gonna say that my death in particular costed us the game, because as you can see, the enemy has encircled us, they're everywhere. Uh, and my team is taking their sweetest time even breaking the left wing, which was heavily bunkered down by my torps from these planes. Uh, the whole team is there, so this is a great, great failure. Uh, but I will not try to defend myself, I potatoed pretty big here. Uh, but that's where the karma stepped in. It's like, oh, you want to do this dirty little thing? Have at it. So this game is going to be over in a few seconds. Uh, well, the replay will be over in a few seconds because after this I'm just watching it, my team getting annihilated. So the recording will stop there. I just did a couple of last drops. But this is one of the things that Wargaming has announced that they will fix. They will nerf, as far as I know all IGN planes that have even remote capabilities such as this. Bizarrely enough, IGN carriers have two, at least Hakuryu, has two sets of planes that he can do. Uh, short range ones and long range ones. The short range ones are not exactly short, they're also pretty long, and it takes them five times longer to actually do drops in between each other. So we will go back to that in a second. Uh, this is just me when I started the game. Like, fresh and started, and you can see the stuttering, and you can see how long it takes to switch from, like, one single flag to the other. How long it takes to switch from a ship to ship, from tech tree and stuff like that. And this is the game as fresh as it can be. More than three years have passed since, the, since this game has been active, and we still have a pretty, pretty bad UI. Uh, and, uh, and I know it's right now 080 and the carriers are the main issue and the problem and that needs to sort out and get rid of and blah blah blah. And I completely agree. They have to give full priority to resolving this carrier right now issue, which we will talk about further. Uh, but the UI, I think Wargaming, you should really step up your game when it comes to your UI. Your game is more than three years old now and we're still having a UI like we're playing on a, on a calculator. This is pretty embarrassing. Uh, and the whole excuse, the more ships you have, the buggier it gets. It, sorry, that doesn't pass anymore. I have all the ships in the game, as you can see, it's true. Uh, and I've done this on purpose to see how slow it can be. What you're seeing right now is when you legit enter the game, how slow it is. I did not record how bad it gets after playing a couple of hours. Because that there is really, really bad. Uh, sometimes it can, the, the whole game can freeze for about 20-30 seconds, if even more, and you can't even click anything, it's completely frozen. Not to mention that I just found out recently that um, whenever I, I'm running the game in full screen windowed mode, because I can just uh, alt tab, or control escape, or press the windows button, whatever. 
and the game will still be running in the background on my main screen, but I will have the taskbar and I can move the mouse from my main screen to other screens, which is very useful when you're streaming. Uh, the audio stops. Uh, there is a way to, to change it in the rest folder, but I didn't want to mess with it. Um, but the, th the thing is, every time I, well, almost, like 50%, all right, let's be honest. Let's call it 50%, if not more, times that I do it, uh, when I go back to my main screen, there will be a pop-up from Windows saying the program has stopped responding. Do you want to close it or do you want to wait for the program? Now, of course, I'm, oh, this always happens when I'm streaming because I don't play this game if I'm not streaming. Uh, and I don't want a program to bloody close in the middle of the game, so I just click, you know, just wait. A couple of seconds later, it really works. It works 100% of times. It always continues the game but that's one of the issues that this game currently has and i realized i wasn't the only one the ui and some game stability and stuff i mean come on we really need that as soon as this whole carrier thing is is balanced and done in the next couple of patches i'm guessing please wargaming make the ui change and, and and fix your next big step we don't need any more content right now. There's plenty of ships in the game. There's plenty of premiums. There's plenty of options and different game modes and stuff going and rolling around for season and season. Please fix your UI so we can play the game more enjoyable. Now, as for the Haku, just to quickly go back. Karma had its place. We didn't have a really good game and I did not try after that. Um, it's something that Wargaming has said that they will fix, thank god. Um, but in general, how I feel about the carriers, I'm torn inside. I'm torn in between a couple of things. You do know that I used to enjoy playing carriers before, um, with the whole RTS style. Uh, my major complaint was... You know, fix the UI because CV UI was terrible, it was broken, and it wasn't really working. You wouldn't have fun, you would just be infuriated by playing it. And I would be okay with carriers staying the old way. Uh, I have played since uh, like a week ago almost that the, the new patch came out. I have played new carriers, uh, we have been giving the British CVs to test. And I have played uh, both tier 8s. One is the regular one, one is the premium one. Funnily enough, premium one does not get torpedo planes. It's only rockets and dive bombers, but we will talk about British CVs more later. Uh, and I have played a tier 10 one. I think it's called Audacious. Uh, British CVs are really something different. Um, and like I said, we will talk about that later. But I have played carriers. I've played Midway. I've played Saipan. Uh, I'm not sure if I played Enterprise, honestly. Uh, I have played um, both British Tier 8, uh, the British Tier 10, Haku Midway, uh, Graft Zeppelin, and Saipan. I've tested a lot of them. Uh, they differ slightly. Some of them have longer or shorter aiming time of the rockets and dive bombers and the way they use the rockets and dive bombers, torpedo planes... Yes, they have slight variation, and I would say that Wargaming has uh, succeeded in making them slightly different. Uh, even as something that's as simple as that, and you think, like, how much variations can you make? It's just, a, it's just a plane carrying a bomb load, whatever the bomb is. I would say that they kind of succeeded in making them different. Um, some have bigger reserves, some go faster. Various different drop patterns and stuff. Um, the gameplay itself, however, it's 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 hard to it's hard to give you my final thought about it because I basically don't even have a final thought about it yet. I can still play a carrier game after five six days and be okay with it. Have fun with it which is definitely a couple of days longer than i expected i would be having fun however a lot of my audience has, has been complaining on twitch that they are extremely boring to watch 
I can understand this. I can perfectly understand this. I thought the whole, the, the playing, playing these new characters would be extremely boring, uh, yet alone watching. Uh, however, I really understand that they might not be extremely uh, entertaining to watch. Uh, but for me, currently, and I'm not sure if this is going to change. I do expect it to change, but I don't know if it will change. Um, carriers have always been, at least at the start, a way for me to have a break in the middle of a session uh, from the regular ships and just play something that's a bit different. Uh, carriers are still a lot different than sailing around in a ship and nothing can change that. Um, so right now I'm not a carrier main nor will I be playing carriers for hours and hours and hours and having super fun. After a while they just get boring. Uh, but currently if we watch just the gameplay okay I guess for now at least. How long is it gonna last? I don't know. And I have ditched randoms for two or three days entirely while I was ranking out. Uh, you will be seeing at least two more games completely different. Ah, uh, not exactly completely different with uh, different outcomes, but extremely, extremely good games from, from ranked. Uh, I just cannot pass on that. They're just way too good to not show. And we've been doing a lot of crazy stuff uh, in randoms as well. You know, I'll try to mix it. Um, I just I just wanted to rank out and have a, have a break and a pause and time to think from randoms and carriers and all this stuff and give it a bit more time for the matchmaking to stabilize. Uh, now I'm back in randoms and I'm playing. Um, so... Uh, I'm still not 100% certain how I feel about the whole rework and everything. Um, but I can tell you for sure one thing. Do I like 080? Absolutely not. I do not like this patch. And I would love if it never happened. Uh, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you share that opinion. Uh, I don't care if Wargaming likes my opinion or not. That's, the, that's simply the fact. However, it's of utmost importance that you do not go and rage because oh my god he agreed with us riot no i think we're gaming will actually um set an end to this by the way i just realized look at my guns look at my guns look where they're looking at they're looking on the left and i'm shooting on the right nice replay system something that i that i also expect we're gaming to maybe after three years have implemented in the game properly maybe one day maybe one day um i don't like the patch and it has brought destroyers to 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 their knees um now i know there's going to be a, a certain amount of you out there who's going to be like ah dds are op if you think the dds are op i'm telling you right now First of all, you have no idea what you're talking about. And second of all, you're probably not a very good player. Now, don't take offense in this, but DDs are not OP. DDs were OP when people didn't know how to play the game. Which is basically them being uh, indirectly OP. And second, when they had all the freedom to do whatever the hell they wanted and there was no specific anti-DD weaponry. Carriers were very rare and there were not a lot of them. Um, people were not that good. People didn't use WASD keys to turn at all. You would just fire torpedoes on a gray line and that would be a hit. That was a long time ago, my friend. And ever since then, the game has been evolving into an anti-DD meta. Hydros... Radars that can hydros and radars both that can see through islands and land and, and ships and everything Extending the ranges of these things extending duration of these things. It's just insane It's absolutely insane um, DDs have a really really big problem right now and they're really really struggling to Stay alive right now the carriers lift off their planes, and that's it. 
They legit just lift off their planes and they're everywhere and they're seeing everything. And DDs can't even set a foothold in the cap. They can't cap, they can't scout, they can't do anything. And that's a bit of a problem. Uh, then you have cruisers. A lot of people are giving up on cruisers as well because you either go full AA, which was my attempt here, which failed miserably and I'll tell you why. Um, or you're just going to be detected. Cruisers have to pick and choose when they get detected more often than not because it will not be really, really fun for them. It will not be a fun experience. Cruisers can't even get close to the front line because they just get nuked. Destroyers... I'm not even gonna talk about that. Carrier can devote 8 to 12 minutes of the game to kill you, even if you're a heal 15 odd Kaba. And I've experienced this uh, yesterday. I had a teammate who was playing a Kaba two games in a row, and two games in a row he was being harassed by the carrier. I mean, I was harassing enemy DDs and killing, and we were winning and all that jazz, but. He was not able to set a foot even close to the middle of the map, and he died eventually. He was raging and he was pissed about it, but he did get killed eventually. Even in a Kaba that has so much HP and heals. The problem with 080 that I have is DDs are completely shut down. And that's not fair for one class to completely shut down the other class. And that's regardless of all the standard anti-DD weaponry that's already in the game, such as radars and hydros and other DDs. It's a huge problem, and I'm hoping that Wargaming will address to it. One of the suggestions was basically... Um, let the carriers spot DDs only for themselves, and update the minimap. So, everyone will be able to see a DD on a minimap, but they will not be able to see it anywhere else. They won't be able to see it live. That way carriers can scout, keep the DDs scouted all the time, and it won't have huge repercussions for DDs. It will be a problem for destroyer players to actually uh, do anything successfully because the enemy team will be seeing them on the minimap. But this will strongly encourage people to start looking at the bloody minimap, which is an awesome thing. And if you're not paying attention, you can still get punished. If you're paying attention, you can actually turn away and play accordingly because you know there's a DD there, but you won't be able to kill the damn DD because he's not detected. He will still need to be detected in a separate way. Now I don't I don't know how and will this war how will wargaming do this and how if they even want to create a special squad of planes that can actually detect the DDs but will do very little damage to everything else. Um, and every other squadron of plane can not see them properly and update i don't know it's up for debate and up for balance but there's something needs to be done to not have a one class completely shut down because now right now this is turning into world of battleships also i don't know i honestly don't know why the camera of this certain replay is just pointing in the wrong way and i apologize for that but as you can see this replay system is extremely bugged right now and I want, it's pretty bizarre because I wanted to show you this replay, what it means to be a Minotaur when you're, what it means to be a ship when you're getting harassed by two, uh, two carriers. How hard and how difficult it actually is to stay alive and to be useful and to do anything. And it was extremely hard and difficult. Um, and unfortunately in the replay system, you can't even see, um, one second, you can't even see the, uh, AA zones, the reinforcements, uh, you have to basically press and hold O, which is extremely infuriating and I have to swap it to something else and now it's taking me some time to get used to the fact that it changed, I swapped it. Um, you basically have to pick and choose which side of your ship, the left side or the right side, or port and starboard, whatever you want to call it, side is going to be reinforced. And then one side loses the percentage of AA efficiency and the other one gets boosted. So you try to keeping, you try, you always try to keep the planes on one side, um, 
of your ship. So if they're coming from the left, you reinforce the left sector, it will be 125 or 150% efficient, but your right side will be only 50 or 75% efficient. So as soon as your planes make a drop, you immediately have to swap to the other side, or you can just leave it at 100%. But that's one of the re that's one of the ways that you can reinforce your AA, and it's been already discussed and talked about. Um, another thing is all your ships that had AA modules demounted. Sorry, all your all your ships that had AA modules mounted before the patch got demounted. The, the Minotaur game that you just watched, even though you, I, it's really hard to say what you actually have seen. Uh, that was a game where I was harassed by two carriers in a full AA Mino. And I ended up the game with having their full attention. Uh, full attention. Wow, what are the words I'm using today? Full attention. And I ended up with like 36 plane kills only. Which was really, really sad and depressing. And then I went to the port. I went to modules and I realized that I do not have a single AA module mounted up. And that was a shock. Uh, because the AA modules themselves have been changed and reworked. So they have all been demounted and you have to uh, buy and mount them again. Now, I'm not sure if you've been credited with credits or are they in your inventory. I didn't really check, but I'm pretty sure one of the two is correct. Um, so I was very disappointed to what they did with the uh, AA. Like full AA Mino and I can't do anything. I was wrong. I didn't want to show you the original game of the Mino because I was just complaining a lot and being shocked. Uh, how First of all, how bad the AA is, not knowing that my modules were not there. Now it's a lot better when they're there, of course. And second, um, one of the things that I still think it's, it's pretty bizarre is it's basically impossible to stay in control. When you're getting, by, when you're getting attacked by multiple carriers, it is really, 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 really hard, even for an experienced player, to stay on top of things. You have no... As two carriers, if they're attacking in the same time, you have no idea which squadrons they're using, which type of planes, where they're coming from, what do you need to do to dodge, which ships are aiming at you, which salvos and from where are coming, who are you gonna shoot? I mean, I've put myself in a very tough spot with the Minotaur, but it was on purpose. Because I wanted to murder some planes. And I have spent some time in carriers attacking full AA Minos. And it was challenging. And here I was really disappointed to see my AA fail. Like I said, I later realized it was my fault for not checking the modules. And it's, it's different now. But there is two things about the AA. If you can avoid the flak, you're pretty good. If you're a carrier player and you see those black clouds, do not enter them under any circumstances. Your planes will just disappear from the sky. I had like 11 plane kills. You know how long it took? From 1 to 11. That's all it took. Just this. Because the entire squadron just flew into my AA flag from a mino and they just disappeared. Uh, you have to dodge the flag. And it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Okay, it's harder if there's multiple ships that you're attacking in the same time. But if it's just one ship that you're attacking, it's not really that hard. You can dodge the flag and you can drop and you can be okay. The AA currently has a problem that it mostly depends upon shooting planes down with the flag, which can be avoided. And the second way is just continuous DPM. But continuous DPM is not strong enough kill the planes. Continuous DPM is slowly damaging all your planes. It's getting them to orange, and then it's starting to getting them into red, and then they start getting shut down. In the meantime, you just did your drops and you just press the F key and go back, which is one of the other problems. The F key. What is the F key for the carrier? Well, it's a key which you can press on a keyboard and your squadron will immediately uh, disengage from the battlefield and start flying back to the carrier and you will immediately after you press the F key be returned to your carrier gain full control of your carrier and you can pick a new squadron and immediately lift off now I have two problems with this first of all which is I'm pretty sure a lot of you have already heard once the uh, once the carrier presses F his planes go 
nose to the sky and they disappeared from the battlefield. They're actually still there and you can see them in replays of uh, of the friendly carrier. Like, I've, I've seen it in the Jingles replay, I've seen it in my own replay when I was playing the Haku game. You can see them coming back in groups of, I don't know, two, three, four, five, depends on how big of the single attack was. But the enemy does not see them, they are not there. They disappear into thin air and they're invulnerable. So I, fl I fly in into the biggest shitstorm available. I'm attacking 12, 12 ships and I'm, I'm going nose in. I make my drop and then my planes are about to all die. I press F and they're immediately invulnerable and they will all return safely. And I will, I'm already in the next squadron flying. It's not fair. It's really not fair. Like Jingles himself said, I don't recall ships having the ability... Once they made a mistake, once they overextended and entered a dangerous area, I don't recall having an ability to press F and immediately sp spawn back at our spawn and be all good and safe and have another go. No, not to mention that the carrier will never put himself in the danger if he can avoid it. He will always be back in the line and never get himself, like his body, his ship, he will never get it endangered. It will just be um his planes and now not even his planes can be destroyed and even if they could be destroyed he has unlimited amount of planes it's insane but i'm not here to rage about it i'm just stating facts and wargaming knows this and they have announced that they will do some hotfix and change and rebalance uh, as soon as possible, and as far as I uh, remember reading, they said that they will actually do it within the 080, which is extremely good news. It's been a week, not even a week, and people are rage quitting the game, forums, reddits, messages, tickets, discords, everyone is going mad because it's not fun anymore and they killed the game and stuff like that. I don't think they killed the game. I think... They made some pretty bad moves with this balance. With this balance, yeah, nice. Uh, with this patch. Um, but it is what it is. It's just we're here right now. They've gathered a lot of data, like a lot of data, and it will have it will help them move forward. Uh, it will bring it brought a lot of things to their attention and it will be a lot easier for them to patch everything and Balance everything now than they just could They could have spent months and months and months more into closed tests and stuff like that and Probably never run into some problems uh, Because once you release it public so it gets access to so many people that you can actually get a lot of different feedback that you otherwise would not get. Uh, the game that you're watching right now, or the game that you were watching, uh, if it's still lasting, because I honestly am not sure because something is wrong right now with the recording. I will have to go through it later. Uh, should be the Hood game. Uh, this was on NA account, uh, so NA server. Uh, it's World of Battleships right now. Battleships have extremely good AA, uh, especially if you have a defensive AA on it. And certain things have been rebalanced about certain uh, ships, so I'm sure you've seen and heard about that as well. It's just, you know, DDs have impossible time, cruisers have a hard time, battleships just as usual. And carriers, well, they may be, they may be fun to play right now. Uh, will they stay? I don't know. I do know that a lot of people hate the rework. Uh, I mostly hate the patch, not the rework itself. Like, my personal opinion is... At this point, I don't really care how are the carriers going to be played. Is it going to be the old RTS style? Or is it going to be this new World of Warplane style? Um, I've seen and played both. I'm not extremely good in either, but I'm okay or relatively good in both uh, I can I can manage in both and the simple fact that this is something new and different 
is what's it keeping it interesting right now. And I hope it doesn't get super boring anytime soon for, you know, my sake and your sake. However, they need to rebalance it. Like, I really don't care which screen a carrier player will be watching when he's flying his planes. Which way the carriers will be played. My number one issue right now is that they don't ruin other people's games. And that is exactly what is happening since the 080 hit. And that is exactly what I was afraid of and was hoping that it wouldn't happen. Um, currently, we've been also testing the British CVs, which are you know, just plain simple, overpowered and broken. You have rocket planes, you have dive bombers, and you have torpedo planes. Rocket planes are usually... do not do a lot of damage, and they are scattered across a pretty big area. And you use them to hit a couple of rockets on a DD, get maybe a thousand of damage, maybe wreck some modules, hopefully set a fire. You do that a couple of times, you've done something. Uh, rocket planes that British CVs have, as I'm sure you've seen in a video that was almost an hour long, if not even longer. Where I played both tier 8 and a tier 10 in a row. All three, I think, were victories. Uh, the British rocket planes are insane. They, ha they carry extreme amount of rockets. And those rockets are extremely accurate. And they can set a lot of fires. They can wreck a lot of modules. And it they can do tremendous amount of damage. I've done 9.1 thousand damage to a Grozaway one game. I've set Montana on triple fire. They're extremely easy to use. You just need to activate the attack a couple of seconds sooner. And that's it. Dive bombers. Extremely powerful as well. They have this ellipse. And they drop a hell of a lot of bombs on it. And they are also a chi, so they can set fire. They can do a lot of damage. And they have the shape of a ship, basically. It's like uh, it's like if you're playing the if you play the old carriers, um, AP bombers. You remember those ellipses? Yeah. Not as crazy as that, but that's how they look. So you basically approach from the front or from the rear, and you carpet bomb the entire ship, and you're gonna definitely get three, four, five hits. You're gonna set them on fire. You're gonna wreck a lot of modules and stuff, and you can do it over and over again. Um, so that's kind of also pretty powerful and then you have torpedo planes who have just one weakness the only weakness that the british torpedo planes have is short range you have to get pretty freaking close to the enemy ship to drop the torpedo planes uh, sorry to, to drop the torpedoes but the the angles that those torpedoes have actually go inward and once they completely lock in you can Throw those planes left and right and they will stay fully locked in. It's not a problem. You can hit all four torpedoes on pretty much any ship. Because they will land super close next to each other. Which of course has the downside that if you missed... You will probably miss all four. Uh, but if you hit, you have a pretty good chance of landing more than just one or two. Which is awesome. So the British TVs, I'm pretty sure, will get rebalanced as well, because they're kind of OP and broken right now. Um, and that's a good thing, because, <laughs> as you can see, carriers are kind of a problem right now. But I'm super glad that Wargaming decided that they, they will hotfix this 080. Because last we talked about them, it was like, oh, 081 is already ready, you know, it's just final tunings and 082 and 083 are already being worked on and stuff so jesus when are we gonna expect a fix of this and then three four days have passed since the patch and they decided to go come out in public and say yeah some things will definitely get addressed within the 080 one of the things also that has been changed is the good old bloom is back if you remember before you get detected 20 seconds passed uh, you you shoot, you get detected. You go behind the island, uh, you're undetected. You peek again, 
within the 20 seconds, you're still detected. It was the stupidest mechanic ever, and it was working as intended. Then a patch occurred, I think it was 079, and a bug appeared where if you get undetected, there is no bloom. So if I fire right now on a certain ship and I get detected, I go behind the cover, I get undetected, I can immediately pop back up again and not still be detected. I won't have my detection increased for full 20 seconds. The second that, I, that they lost the vision of me, they lost the vision of me permanently. My concealment goes back to whatever it was without firing. Well, that also changed. And they are aware of that, and they did say that they will fix that as well. That won't be a part of 080 as far as I know. Uh, they're aware of this. It was a bug that needed fixing, because you can't control bugs. Uh, which is fine, I'm absolutely okay with them debugging the game, uh, but everybody wants it back. I think there was a short survey, like 93 to 95% of people across all servers wanted this back. So, sooner the better, uh, but I don't expect it before 08, 1 or 2. Um, on What else did we miss? Let's see. Julio Cesare is being moved to tier 6. Yeah, that's also pretty interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure most people won't have anything against this. Because Julio Cesare, which is a tier 5 premium battleship, is one of the most overpowered ships in the game for its tier. Um, it has no problem owning the crap out of everything. And they're moving it to tier 6. Now, this is pretty unstandard for wargaming, because they usually don't tend to mess around with ships... That are premium that people pay their money for uh, but sometimes because you know it's good for business even if it's op and it's not healthy for the game it's good for business of course people will want to buy it uh, but sometimes certain things are just really bad for, for the game which can be bad for your business eventually as well so thank god they finally decided to do something about it how is julio cesare going to with minimum adjustments be able to carry, uh, would handle itself in a tier 6 versus tier 7 and 8 ships? I don't know. We'll have to test it and find out, and I'm looking forward to, do, to doing that as well. Um, without anything else that I want to talk about? Oh yeah, at the end of the... At the end of this video, you will probably see a screen with results, which is one of the really, really bizarre things. It turns out that most of your planes just don't die. Unless they're all super damaged. Which may sound a bit bizarre to you, but... You have a squadron of planes which is fully green. And they all basically have to go fully orange. And then they have to all go fully red. And then you start losing them. Or pretty close to that. I ended the game with my daring. I had... 72 and a half... Thousand damage... To planes. And I did not kill a single one. 72 and a half thousand damage to CV planes without a single plane kill. That is just ridiculous. Because they would, I would just keep damaging the entire squadron. I would have to do ton of damage to the entire squadron to get them all to red before the first plane started dying. And they would always just disengage in the meantime. Or they would have to fly in the flag, which... If they don't, he can do billion damage and you will never get any kills. Also, one thing that it's just pretty freaking bizarre, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't know, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. I'm not happy with 080, to sum it up. Uh, but I don't think it's the end of the world. And I don't think it's the end of the game either. I think it will get uh, balanced and fixed. Uh, we will just have to get used to certain things. And my advice would be learn how to deal uh, with it. Th that's, that's the best advice that I can give you right now. I am not okay with 080. Don't get me wrong. Far from it. There's a lot of things that need fixing. Um, because one class is right now pretty ruined. Uh, the other class is pretty endangered. Third class is, I guess, still okay. And 
The carriers are wreaking havoc again. They're having... At least the higher tier ones, just way too much power, even if they're bad players. You're just constantly scouting everything, and I don't, I'm not sure that's pretty, pretty fine. So, yeah. I'm just hoping that they will fix it. And... If you're a DD, be very careful how you approach caps. It is very usual now that the games last full 20 minutes. Because people just can't kill each other on time. It is very usual that some caps stay uncapped for the entire game. Play the long game then. Adjust. Do not YOLO for the caps if you don't have to. If you don't feel like it's right. Because uh, there's just so many smoke screens that you can dump. And the carry will just keep coming. And it doesn't matter if you shoot them down or not. They will just keep coming. Right now, the situation is pretty bad. When it comes to carriers having the influence on the game. Uh, but I don't think the game is, is over. You know, It will get fixed. And it will get balanced. It will just take some time. Of course, the sooner the better. But it is what it is right now. Um... I don't know if there's if there's really anything else I wanted to talk about. It's just everybody was please let us know how you feel about the carriers and the 080. I'm still trying to adapt myself. I have played some DDs. It's a lot harder right now than it was. And as someone pretty experienced, I'm struggling. So I can just imagine how it is for people who are less experienced or relatively new to the game. Um, and I understand. I completely understand. And try to do your best to stay, to not YOLO, to not go solo, don't go alone. If you're alone, the carrier will come and get you. It's, it, he's, a, he's a Baba Yaga right now, so <laughs> it, it's just the way it is. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. Just cope with it the best you can and give Wargaming some time to adjust, to rebalance the thing. Um, don't just ditch the game entirely. Of course... This is a perfect time as any to just g give some pause to World of Warships and go play something else. I mean, I'm playing Subnautica right now. Every time I rage quit from World of Warships, I go there and I have some fun. The, the game is awesome. Still early access and a lot of bugs, but yeah. Um, right now, I honestly am not sure how long this video is supposed to last because my recording software is bugging out. But I think we're coming to a close. So, good luck. Good luck. Try to have fun. Don't take it too harsh and don't lose your nerves because balancing is in the progress. It's only been five, six days since the patch. Play some ranked, play something else. And when you are playing World of Warships, randoms, try to adapt the best as you can and try to learn from it. The better times are coming. It can't get worse than it is right now. Let that be your comforting place. Right now, it is as rough as it can be. And it's getting rebalanced. It will take some time. Good luck. Try to have fun. Try not to rage or destroy your PC because... Oh my god. What the hell? Stupid war gaming. What is this game? Broken piece of crap. Yeah, just... I know. I know. I'm in the same... I'm in the same same bad place as you are. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. Share, leave a like. I'll see you next Wednesday, of course, with another episode of Funs with Hunts. And... Yeah, I'll see you on the battlefield. Good luck in rank, good luck in randoms. We 
sank their battleship. 